Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. <coughs> we are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number. 63. Lesson number is it 63 or 64? I'm not quite sure. It is lesson number 64. Day day 3060 day 3000 is to signify that we are in the third edition, third edition day 64, we are on page 263. Yesterday we did problem number 19. Problem number 19 deals with, as it says right here, parabola. We did problem number 19 that you see in the book yesterday and we labeled that as part A. And I explained yesterday in, in the last video that we're going to do three more problems like that dealing with parabolas. Part A we did yesterday, today we're going to do part B. And then there are two more to go, C and D obviously. Let's take a look at this problem. So we are given a parabola just like yesterday, just like last video, uh, video. Parabola looks something like this. The equation that is, that is given to us is y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 15. And we are asked to find the coordinates of its vertex, its roots, its line of symmetry, and its x and y intercepts. Let's get going, shall we? Since we are looking for coordinates of vertex, if we can somehow transform this equation into what is known as a vertex form where we can identify verte vertex, the coordinates of the vertex just by visual inspection by looking at the equation just by visual inspection that would be very helpful, wouldn't it? And how do we go about doing it? We go about doing it by using a process known as completing the square. We did it we did it yesterday, we have done it a few more times in the past if you watch these videos in proper sequence, then of course you're familiar with it. So let's do that. We have, we have the equation here. Y we are told is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 15. I'm not going to explain too much. If you need explanations, watch the previous videos. We're going to complete the square. This is already a square right here. Minus 2 times x times, let's put in two, 1. Well, I should say let's put in 1. It has to be 1 because 2 times x times what quantity will give us back the 2x that we're looking for? Obviously 1. And then we have 1 squared. This whole thing that you see there is a perfect square. This quantity will equal to x minus 1 whole squared. This entire quantity. But we still have our negative 15 originally that we had. So we have to put that in here. And we also need to undo. We also have to undo what we just did here which is we introduce this positive 1 squared. We need to undo it. Negative 1 squared. Even though 1 squared is just 1, I'm doing it for emphasis. So you can see, whatever it is that you add or subtract, you have to undo it. So if we are adding some, sub, something, we must subtract the same quantity. So undo it. We are subtracting it. We must add it. And negative 15 and negative 1 is negative 16. There we go. We are done. That's it. What does it tell us? It tells us, it tells us that the parabola has been shifted, has been parabola shifted one unit to the, and this is the part that people find tricky sometimes, to the right. Even though it is negative one, it tells us, the negative one tells us the parabola shifted one unit to the right and 16 units down. And 16 units down. Well, if it's, if it's shifted, if it's shifted one unit to the right and 16 units down, we have the coordinates of the vertex. These are the coordinates of the vertex here. The vertex, because of the fact that it shifted one unit to the right, is positive one, and 16 units down is negative 16. There we go. So we answered the first question. What are the, what are the coordinates of the vertex? So how did we answer it? By rewriting the original quadratic equation in the vertex form. This is called the vertex form of the parabola. It is still, it's the same parabola, obviously, it's the same equation written in a different form. 
once we have once we have done this much work it'll be a shame to just let it go to waste we can continue with this work and now for the next question what are the rules of this equation what are the solutions to this quadratic equation we can find this we can find the rules we can find the answer that answer from 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 this equation right here by continuing it so that's what we're going to do when we talk about the rules of the of the parabola we're talking about we're talking about where does the parabola cut the x-axis in other words where does it equal where does y equal to zero y we are told is this quantity right here y y we are told is this quantity right here y is equal to x minus one y is equal to x minus one whole squared minus sixteen and we want that to equal to zero once we do that we can add sixteen to both sides we can get rid of this sixteen and we get x minus one whole squared equals sixteen and once we have that we can we are going to take the square root of both sides square root of because we want to solve for x obviously once we take the square root of both sides this part is this side is quite straightforward square root of something squared is just the quantity itself which is x minus 1 it is here we have to pay attention square root of 16 what does it mean when when somebody asks you when somebody asks us what's the square root of 16 or what's the square root of 9 what does it mean can you articulate the question what does the question say when somebody asks you what's the square root of 9 well what they're asking here is that what is that number what is that number what is that number which when multiplied by itself gives us 9 or 16 or whatever it is here it is 16 and the answer of course is 4 4 multiplied by itself gives us 16 but we, what we need to understand also obviously is that it's not just 4 it is also negative 4 negative 4 and positive 4 negative 4 times negative 4 also gives us negative 16 so question that the way it was posed was not correct the question was what is that number which when multiplied by itself gives us 16 the question should have been what are those numbers which when multiplied by themselves give us 16 and the answer answers are two there is a positive 4 positive 4 positive 4 times positive 4 is going to give us 16 and negative 4 times negative so how do we write it we write it like this so the answer here is positive or negative 4 same thing here it's positive 4 times positive 4 is 16 and so is negative 4 times negative 4. Do you understand? And let's add 1 to both sides. And we will find our x. So x equals positive or negative 4 minus or, minus or plus 1. Plus 1. And that gives us the two solutions. x is either positive 4 plus a 1 or x is equal to negative 4 plus a 1. In the first case x would equal to positive 5 and second case x would equal to negative 3. There you go. Those are the roots. Once we have the roots we can work on the we are, well I was going to say we can work on the vertex but you see the, the roots of the quadratic equation could also have been found out by using the quadratic formula or doing the factorization. I forgot for the first for a split second I forgot that we had used completing the square. Had we arrived at the roots, listen carefully, had we arrived at these roots by either using quadratic formula or uh, by factorizing, then we would have to do the work to find the vertex, the coordinates of the vertex. Here the process is the other way around. Here it gives us the coordinates of the vertex and then we continue from here. Complete the square, it gives us the coordinates of the vertex and then we continue with this to find the roots. In the other two approaches, in quadratic formula and in factorization, we first find the roots and then look for the coordinates of the vertex. So let's pretend that we have these coordinates, or we have these roots. How do we go about finding the coordinates of the vertex? Which we already know, the vertex is right there. But we're going to redo the work so I can show you the other approach. So we're going to raise all of this thing. So we are all done with this approach. We're going to keep the vertex there so that we have it. And we're going to pick up from here. We're going to pick up from here as if 
we know nothing about the vertex, which is right there, positive, positive one, negative six. So here's how it looks like. Here's how it looks like. We have one, two, three, four, five. And we don't actually have to draw the picture to understand what we are about to do, which is to locate the line of symmetry. We don't have to do that. We simply have to understand that it's positive four and negative three. From positive four to negative three is eight units. Halfway, halfway across, it's going to be four units. So if you move four units to the left from positive five, if you move four units to the left to positive five, you're going to end up with a positive one. Or if you move four units to the right, if you move four units to the right from negative three, you're going to end up with positive one. See, this is positive five. And then we have negative three. One, two, three. Negative three. And those are the roots. Those are the solutions to the equations, quadratic equations, because that's when y equals zero. That's where it cuts the x-axis. Those are the x-intercepts. And as we said already, it's eight units. So halfway across is going to be four units. One, two, three, four, right here is our line of symmetry. X equals to one is our line of symmetry. Which also tells us that the X coordinate of the vertex is one. But how do you find the Y coordinate? Well, it's very simple. Once we found out what the line of symmetry is, once we understand the line of symmetry is one, we can put it back in our original equation, and I'm going to put down the original equation the way it was given to us. The original equation the way it was given to us was x squared x squared minus 2x minus 15 is equal to 0, and you will see that we'll get negative 16 when we put in x equal to 1. So 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 15 2 times 1 is just 2, two. 1 minus 2 is minus 1 minus 2, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, and negative 1, and positive, negative, 1 and negative 1 and negative 15 is negative 16. You see, once we know the x coordinate of the vertex, we can find out the y coordinates of the vertex. y coordinate turns out to be negative 16, which of course we knew all along from the other approach. So let's put here negative 16 someplace. Let's pretend negative 16 is right here. And right here is the vertex, and the coordinates are positive 1 and negative 16. We already have the x-intercept because those are the roots. Let's find the y-intercepts. Finding the y-intercepts is very straightforward. Y-intercepts, where does it cut the y-axis? It cuts the y-axis when x is equal to 0. If x is equal to 0, this, this term is going to drop out. This term is going to drop out. It's negative 15. It's negative 15. Let's put negative 15 here. Negative 15. And that's where it's going to cut it. So what does our parabola look like? Our parabola looks something like this. Let's see if I can do a decent job. Something like that. That is our vertex right here. This is where it cuts the x, uh, y axis rather. This is where it cuts the x axis. The line of symmetry is right here. And that's all. How else could we have figured out the roots? We could have used either the quadratic formula or factorization. And if you like, we can do those two methods as well to see that we do indeed get the same answers, positive 5 and negative 3. If you were to use the quadratic formula, it will give us the same answer. Here is our equation. Here is our equation. We found these answers with these roots, you understand, by using by using completing by using the method called completing the square. Now we're going to use a different method. We're going to use quadratic formula and show that we indeed get the same roots. Obviously, we should get the same roots. So x is equals to negative b minus b. Minus b is going to be minus, minus of negative 2 plus or minus b squared, which is negative 2 squared, minus 4a is 1, 4ac, which is negative 15, over 2 times a, which is just 2 times 1. Negative and negative is positive, so it's just 2, plus or minus. What do we get here? This is where we have to pay attention. Negative times negative is positive. 4 times 15 is 60. And negative squared is 4. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 60 is 64. You see? We get 64 over 2. 64 over 2. Which can be written, obviously, as 2 plus or minus square root of or plus or minus 8 over 2. Since we have this is this has a factor of two, that has a factor of two, that has a factor of three. If we divide the entire fraction by two, 
if we divide the entire fraction by 2, we end up with 1 plus or minus 4, which is exactly what we had here. 1 plus or minus 4, which is where we got 5 and a negative 3. Or we could have also used factorization. We could have used factorization and we would get the same answer. And we're not going to worry about factorization, you can do it yourself. Okay? So that was the end of this problem. Tomorrow we'll do part C. Actually, I'm going to give you the problem for tomorrow on the blackboard right now. And I would like you to work on it. I would like you to work on it. Let's, let's, let's put it someplace. Where can we put it? Let's put it up here. This is the problem that we're going to do in the next video. Do you understand? And it's a very straightforward question. It simply says, describe a parabola that contains that contains the points points one two four and negative one and four and, and negative one and positive two and three positive two and three In other words, in other words, we are told that we have a parabola and all that we are told, only thing that we are told about this particular parabola is the fact that it happens to go through three points whose coordinates that are given to us. It goes through, let's call it point A, point B and point C. It goes through point A which has a coordinates of 1 and 2, positive 1 and positive 2. It goes through point B which has coordinates of positive 4 and negative 1 and it goes through point C which has a coordinates of positive 2 and positive 3. And all, all we are told is to describe it. That's all we are told. Describe it. Well, how does one go about describing a parabola? Well, it simply means that we have to talk about, we have to give it salient features. Describing a parabola simply means we have to tell the person where does it cut the x-axis, where does it cut the y-axis. In other words, we have to provide x and y intercept, what is the equation for the line of symmetry, and what, is the, what are the coordinates of its vertex. And finally, if you like, we can even plot it. You do that yourself. Do it yourself and then tomorrow you can compare your work. It will give you the chance to compare your work against the work that we will do together. Okay? Bye now.